So I got to see some of the Kavanaugh's hearing today, and what a joke. I mean, I, first off, he's got the votes, right? The Republicans, all he needs is 51 votes. Thanks to Harry Reid uh, pushing the, what they called the nuclear option at the time. It said you only need a simple majority to get uh, judges confirmed. Well, the Democrats shot themselves in the foot with that, and it continually comes back to bite them. So I mean, they can gnash their teeth and uh, yell all they want, and nothing's going to change. Uh, secondly, uh, the entire idea of what these confirmations have become is nonsensical anyways. I don't know. To me, it doesn't seem like uh, the Founding Fathers intended this to be, uh, how will you vote specifically on this case? And if I don't like that, then I'll vote against you. It seemed to be you were supposed to say, What's your general feelings? Will you be an originalist? Do you think the Constitution is like a living, breathing document? And then decide whether or not you think that they're qualified based on those answers. Not what would you say in this specific case. But that's no longer the case. And so uh, now we're digging into what exactly would you vote. And, and believe it or not, uh, I was just reading here earlier today about what they called the Ginsburg Standard, where I'm not a fan of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but I do like what she said in her confirmation hearings, where basically the gist of it is I, it would be improper for me to tell you how I I would rule on a case because I would need to hear the case and all the arguments first. If I have already made up my mind before I hear all those, then I would be a bad justice. Uh, so I think that's a pretty reasonable argument that, you know, Kavanaugh should just say, like, I, look, I I would have to hear both sides. I believe that I'm an originalist and I'll defend the Constitution, but, you know, both sides will present their case and I'll rule based on what was said in the courtroom. Um, but the real story today was just the hysterics from the protesters and the Democrats. Uh, apparently, too, it seems as if the Democratic leadership uh, kind of coordinated the day before and decided to come up with some of these strategies, which just made them look so childish and ridiculous, it's actually embarrassing. So for starters, 10 seconds in, and you have the Democrats interrupting, saying, that basically they should withhold the hearings or stop them because new documents on Kavanaugh's record were just released yesterday. Never mind, they've already made up their mind, they've said publicly. Never mind, they've had weeks to look at hundreds of thousands of documents, but now they need access to at least 40,000 more. It's just a joke. It's disingenuous. You know it's all politics, and it's just, it's so aggravating just to watch it so blatantly. Then you had all these protesters in the audience show up dressed like women from The Handmaiden's Tale, basically implying that if, if Kavanaugh's can Confirm, then we're going to have a system where uh, I guess women are legally raped and have to bear children of the men that raped them like in that show it's absolutely ridiculous and it's even funnier when you consider the same people defending this or these people making these arguments for the people last week that were so upset that Trump said if Democrats win there could be violence from the Democrats that little statement which I agree I, I don't like Trump saying things like that either but that little statement was considered hyperbolic and oh can you believe Trump's fear mongering but a bunch of people saying oh by the way if we appoint this one Supreme Court justice we're on the threshold of becoming like some re religious theocracy where women are legally raped every day and kept in chains. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's hyperbolic to the extreme. And it just, everyone says about how Trump's childish and embarrassing. And I could see that argument if you're on the left. He does a lot of things I think is kind of stupid and embarrassing, particularly a lot of his tweets. Uh, but you have to ask yourself, what came first, the chicken or the egg in this situation? And I think, and granted, I'm biased, but I think that Trump is a response to a lot of these behaviors we've been seeing escalate. I've been seeing it a lot in universities uh, since 2004 uh, and back then, but just hyperbolic, uh, just accusations of you're an evil person, you're a bad person, shut up, you don't get to talk, uh, not wanting to debate facts, things of that nature, just wanting to attack your opponent. And I think that Trump, a lot of people were like, they're tired of this, they're tired of being attacked, so they wanted someone that would attack back. Uh, a lot of times I think Trump does look foolish and does things that I don't agree with, uh, says things that, but uh, so far, most of his policies I do like. Anyways, uh, these same people then on the left will say Trump's an embarrassment to our country, yet then they'll somehow support the the show we saw today. It looked like a Jerry Springer episode, people yelling in the crowd and stuff. Nah, I think something like 22 people had to be drug out and were arrested. It was just silly. So if you're looking to be embarrassed by our politicians yet again and our political system, uh, tune in because I think this will be occurring for at least a couple more days. So you can look and... Uh, regret that we don't have a system where we actually talk about people's records or uh, you know actual policies and instead it's more about who could put on a bigger theatrical show of being offended so enjoy